They produce a mucus and that's essentially how they move along. They've got this muscle called the head foot muscle which they use to move along that, um, that um, trail. They're very hard to see. Sometimes when I point it out to people, they still can't see it. The smallest we get in Tasmania is about one millimetre. I'd say they're one of the most loved beetles or up there. A lot of them look like dogs or cartoon characters and I think that's why they look very cute. Uh, we're identical twins. Yeah. Yep. I start off by saying I study beetles and then I say uh, uh, specifically I study weevils uh, and then usually they go to, oh, uh, you mean flower weevils or the bugs in my flower? And I say, yes, um, there's a whole bunch of other species though. There's like 60,000 species and they get really interested because they didn't realise there were so many. A malacologist is someone who studies mollusks, which is an incredibly large phylum. I focus on land snails. In Tasmania, we have from about 240 to 260 species of land snail. 85% are native and a large proportion are only found in Tasmania. They play an important role in the calcium cycle. So their shells are composed of calcium carbonate. They draw that up from the leaf litter and they make their shells. So one of the main roles of weevils is recycling nutrients, especially rainforest species can um, consume dead plant material and process that and then turn that out into biologically available nutrients. There's so many in Tasmania that are really understudied and a lot of them in the collections are misidentified or not identified at all. So there's a lot of work to do. So we have a permit through the Tasmanian Museum and Art Gallery. They've given us a permit to collect for them. When we're planning field trips, there's a wide range of habitats that we sample. So areas that are more open uh, have a high diversity of weevils. For snails, rainforests are really good. Wet creeks or gullies. There's a few things we bring with us. I bring my camera, so I have a macro photography setup. We bring collecting vials, a beating sheet. If I'm targeting snails, then I look more on the ground, under logs and uh, rocks. And I usually look in the vegetation. So I beat vegetation onto a beating sheet and then look at the invertebrates. The pooter is something I got recently and it's essentially two tubes that go into a vial and you suck on one of the tubes, you suck an insect up in the other tube and it goes into the vial. So it's really good for fast moving things that are difficult to get using a vial on its own and flying things as well. We work well together as a team. So for example, he'll just be looking under logs, photographing things, I'll be beating stuff off trees and then if I find something interesting, I'll bring it over to him and he'll photograph it. There can be a whole different world just under a rock. People don't really know about it, especially with Macro photography, you can zoom into a snail shell and see the sculpture that you would not be able to pick with the naked eye. They have very intricate sculpture and patterns. It's just an incredible world when you zoom in. Most of my knowledge about land snails, I've learned it myself from going out into the field and looking at these snails myself. I've also had a lot of guidance by a fellow snail expert I mean, being a, a scientist is just about observing. Yeah. Uh, and being curious. And That's the main one. Yeah. So it's just a, it's really just an innate curiosity. I think we've both always been interested in small, intricate things. When I was a kid, it was mainly things on the beach, uh, rocks, bones, um, insects, just sort of general natural history. There's a bit of our collection that is bought from antique stores or 
given to us by other people. Behind me there's some skulls as well, because I used to collect skulls a lot. You know, bird skulls, wombat, all sorts. So I've got a lot of pinned insects. Last time I counted, about one to one and a half thousand. So that's the most important part of my room. I started uh, working at the Tasmanian Museum and Art Gallery when I was uh, 16 or 17. I've just been a volunteer there. So throughout that time, um, yeah. Otto and I have collected approximately 6,000 specimens, give or take. Probably about 85% of the species in Tasmania are undescribed. So that's a very large proportion. We need to describe them so the, the knowledge about the species isn't lost if they go extinct. Globally, there's uh, a lot of weevils that are threatened. There's about 100 that are extinct already. The work that Bryn and I do, it helps with conserving uh, species. So, for example, we can go out and, you know, get a new locality for that species, and that's very valuable data. There's this new genus of now I found up at the Douglas Axley National Park. And for me, it was just really exciting. It's a really, really tiny coropid. Uh, it's about um, two and a half mils, and it's completely blind. Yeah, that's probably my favourite, yeah. Uh, I've got a lot of um, favourites, so it's very hard to pick one. In the top five, definitely, would be one called Griffithia animala, which is one that I've been looking for for the last five years, ever since I was interested in weevils. And a few months ago, on a field trip with Tasmanian Museum, I found 12 of them. And there was about 15 specimens worldwide, I think, before that. And they look very weird. They're very long. They're flat. Yeah, they're just really weird. So Bruno and I, were heavily involved with iNaturalist. iNaturalist is the largest uh, citizen science forum in the world, so people can upload things, uh, observations of species. Mainly what we're doing is looking at observations other people have made of snails and weevils and other things that we're interested in, and we try and identify them best we can. And I, I really enjoy that, just the challenge of trying to find out what it is. There's new species found all the time on there. People just upload them, not really knowing what they are, and an expert will identify it. It's really good for younger users. I've met quite a few younger naturalists that are, that are on the platform, and they use it as a social network. And it's a very, yeah, it's a very good platform to share knowledge. I really enjoy it. So I think people should care about the natural world because we're so reliant on it. We're much more reliant than we than we think. And it's all connected. The weevils are connected to the larger predatory beetles that feed on them and then the birds that feed on them and then you know seed distribution from the birds and it has a real impact on us. My hope is that the work that I do in describing species and uh, describing their ecology and taxonomy will better inform conservation plans. There are quite a few species in Tasmania which are very restricted. Uh, some can be restricted to a, a single section of a creek or a few rock screes. If, if, if that place is disturbed, there's a chance that it could become extinct. And for me, these tunnel snails are very special They've been here for, in some cases, hundreds of thousands of years. I, I think they need to be conserved. Mm -hmm.